Are you qui? Skuyena koi. Neck now, Laura Woods. I said, hello there. Good morning. My name is Laura Woods. I'm a member of the Yurok tribe of Northern California. People ask me where that is. I say, well, visualize this California-Oregon border. We're almost to Oregon, right on the ocean, where the redwoods meet the Pacific Ocean. It's beautiful. Beautiful remote country. And uh, we are salmon people, fishing people, ocean people. I recognize myself as Nur Ur Nur, which is a coastal Yurok. We have our reservation is along the Klamath River, one mile on either side of the Klamath River from the mouth where it empties into the Pacific Ocean, up about 50, 50 miles or so, the length of that. Um, it is my understanding that the reason the Creator made Yurok people in the first place was because he had a specific job and purpose for us. And uh, we are world renewal people. So our job is to renew the world. Easy, right? But that song was so beautiful, it touched me. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I was doing so good till it was my turn to talk. But that's the way it goes, right? So as world renewal people, we, we, how do you re renew the world? Well, you need to rebalance it. So we believe in balance. And uh, on a personal level, and as a people, and as a world, the world's a little out of balance right now, if you haven't noticed. So we're getting ready for our high dance, our world renewal dance, which white man renamed as a jump dance. And it has nothing to do with jumping. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Appreciate it. But there's one part of the dance where the, where the men hold hands, and when they're getting ready to start the dance, they go, whoa, and they put their arms up, and they jump out, and then they start singing and dancing. And so we're pretty sure that's why it got named the jump dance. But it's a 10-day dance. And the dancers and the people that support it are praying and fasting for up to 14 days before the 10 days start. It's a very serious dance. My family is a, is a dance family. We brought our back, our jump dance, from the brink of extinction because where we needed to start the dance is now a part of California state property. And to hold our dance there, we needed a special use permit to have fires in locations that the state lo said there's not a allowed fires there and, and uh, that there's a bird that may be endangered and they don't want us to mess, it, mess up the land even though it's been our land since time immemorial. So out of the clear blue sky, uh, finally after 40 years of trying to get a special use permit, we were granted special use permit in 2012. We brought the dance back and it was the first time in over 130 years that that dance get, got to be. It's important. So uh, <clears throat> how we do this dance to renew the earth and to rebalance all who live on the earth is the men uh, have um, baskets or purses in, in their hands. And they m do a motion from their, from their side up. And that's lifting all good things up into the air, up, up to creator. What that is is truth and honesty and love and prosperity and plenty and health, jobs, fish, all good things. And with their opposite leg, with their left leg, they stamp down as they dance. So that's putting down disease and poverty and domestic violence and oppression, invasion and trauma, all bad things, all good things. 
So then there's balance. And they also um, sing, of course, you know, not for past generations and healing, but present and for all the future, future people. So it's a great healing opportunity for everybody. So about me personally is that um, my father was a, was a product or a victim of boarding school. He was taken from the home at 13, sent to Sherman Indian Institute. He graduated from high school. He, mounted, he was a very good student, very intelligent man. He graduated and immediately joined World War II, where he joined all the other minorities in the Army on the front lines in the European theater. He served with great honor, great dignity. Uh, he got two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star with Cluster for Valor in Battle. He was a 20-year active military man. So I was a little Yurok army brat. Tri we were stationed all over the country and all over the world. And uh, far from the reservation, although we were always there for every chance we could get for summers, which were the best summers for a kid in the world, riding a horse through the the redwoods and on the ocean and hanging out at the beach. I mean, it was like idyllic. It was perfect. And I always said, I'm going to move back. But as as uh, fate would have it, I grew up in New Mexico. My, my poor co-worker Lori here from the Pacific Northwest. So we, we live in a temperate rainforest where it never gets really hot and never gets really cold. It's a, we live in the land of 50 degrees and a lot of rain. And so she's been melting here. And I said, you see, you see, I lived here 50 years. I know what heat is. And you do get used to it, but it's still hard. Anyway, so I moved back. I, I lived many years in New Mexico, went to New Mexico State University, and, and worked in uh, the Third Judicial District Court for many years. They said, why did you choose that? I said, well, I had two little boys to feed. I would have been anything for anybody, anywhere. I, I could have, it just happened to be that way. So now I work in uh, Yurok Tribal Court. I work with Judge Abby Abinati, who was the very first, you all know, <laughs> she's a rock star. And uh, to, to work with this amazing woman and have her mentor me personally is everything you can imagine it to be and more. And I am a paralegal and a family law mediator for Judge Abby, the Yurok Tribal Court. My friend Lori here is a probation officer. And she, she facilitates the batterers intervention program. And uh, under Judge Abby's guidance, we're very busy because <laughs> we, have lots, we wear lots of hats and we do lots of things. So um, what I, what I did want to do is talk to you a little bit about how my life experience brought me to the understanding of the importance of forgiveness and healing. I think forgiveness and healing is underestimated. And uh, I, I don't know if at some point during a healing process you can have total healing without some, at least some forgiveness. And so as... Here's my story. In 1998, in Las Cruces, America, my youngest son was 16 years old at the time he was shot to death. So there's a Yurok tribal member, ex you know, whose life was extinguished early. He was shot, maybe accidentally, maybe not, by another 16-year-old. And, and uh, so that's quite a process for any of you who've lost a child or know someone who has, you know, you know that road is not easy. So I floundered around quite a bit, kind of self-destructive for a while, until one night I, I came across a situation where this young girl came up to me and, and uh, was offering me a rose and said, I don't know, I want to give you this rose, but I don't know if you'll take it. And I looked at her, and it was the young girl who had shot my son to death. And I hadn't seen her since the court proceedings. She was found guilty, or she pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter and tampering with evidence and did, she was 16 too, so they couldn't, you know, she was a child. So um, she did two and a half years here in Albuquerque at the youth facility the, she, in custody. You know, she graduated from high school. And uh, I looked at her and I said, Summer, is that you? And she said, yes. She said, I'm so sorry. You know, don't hate me. 
said, I don't hate you, Summer. I hate what happened, but I don't hate you. She said, well, I hate me. Tell me what I can do. And I knew in that instant that whatever I said next was going to affect this young woman for the rest of her life. I said, oh, creator, what do I say? I had no time to prepare for that moment. So I looked at her face and I said, Summer, you can do two things for me. She said, anything, anything. I said, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to forgive yourself for what happened that night. And she said, I can't. You have to. You just told me you'd do anything for me. You said it. Now you have to do it, right? And she said, I don't know how. Forgiveness is a word that gets used a lot. But the actual nuts and bolts and how do you even begin from a little simple wrong to something as big as taking someone's life, how do you do that? So I'm thinking, oh, great, now i got to help her do this. So I grabbed her hands. We're both crying. And I said, well, then repeat after me. It, you know, I was like, do you swear or from now? I said, I, Summer Mitchell, and she's crying, I, Summer Mitchell, I said, from this, from this day, on this day and from this day forward, she, I forgive myself for everything that happened that night. I forgive myself for everything I did and everything I didn't do. And, and I'm, I'm just going to, I forget exactly everything, but I made her repeat after me, and she did. And I said, good, then it's done, and you can't take it back. It's, it's gone. And so you could almost visually see the relief, that big step towards healing that happened for her that night. And I said, the second thing I want you to do, Summer, is I want you to get your act together. You're so beautiful, and you're so young, and you're so smart. What are you doing floundering around, killing yourself over this thing that you can't change now? I said, I forgive you. And I had never said those words before, but I meant it. And I said, if I forgive you, you have to forgive you too. I said, go back to school, get some training, get a job, get married, and hold your own babies someday. And live your life. You're not honoring me by dying too. And in that encounter, I was healed so much. It was that last, well, not the last, but one of the big pieces in my healing journey that I absolutely needed to do. So now in my experience, when I moved back to the reservation in 2014 and working with Judge Abby, and I'd never done mediation before, and then Judge Abby said, I think you'd be a good mediator, and when the judge says you're going to be a good something, then, then you're going to be a good something. So... Um, I meet with families in trauma and divorce, child custody, property, debt and money due, fishing holes, you name it. Wherever there's a dispute, I'm there. And uh, all of my clients are, are have a lot of residual trauma. And then I, I meet parents that are using kids as weapons, you know, against each other. And uh, so the story I just shared with you about forgiveness. That's like a, my big gun that I have to pull out sometime and say, here's what's important. Your kids are still alive and you can still hug them. What are you doing? Here's my story. Let's get this right. And I break them down and make them cry and then we start over. <laughs> and it's amazing, it's, it's grounding. And it's good and it's powerful. And so when we're talking about generational healing, when we're talking about 
DNA, damaged DNA. We're talking about all these things. And I think some of you have brought it up too. It's like there's always balance. So here's this invasion and this trauma and this disease and rape and lost and slavery and murder. But also we're still here. So we can't have one without the other. So we've got strength and integrity and resilience. And we've got humor and we've got an ancestral guard that cannot let us down. So in the trauma, we also have all the tools in our DNA too that can heal and that can not just heal, but flourish and be stronger than ever because of all the trauma that's happened in our lives that hasn't killed us. It's true, it's only served to make us stronger. And in this strength, we can come together and we can be one and we can heal ourselves. And every time one of us gets better, all of us gets better. And I love to be around strong women that are doing their part every day in every way they can and following in their grandmother's and great-grandmother's footsteps and making not just our world. You know, when the tide comes in, all the ships go higher. So in healing ourselves, we are healing the world, and we are restoring balance to the, to the whole earth. And I honor you for that, and I thank you for sharing your stories today. And you rock the word walk thou, walk thou, walk thou, It means I am grateful, and I am grateful for you. Walk thou.